and welcome to Lizzie Watches Yaoi and today I'm looking at B-Boy Kidnapping Idol which is a very short and sweet OVA. It runs, it says 26 minutes but I swear it's only probably about 20-22 minutes because there's a lot of the time spent just having still images of like the main idol singing for a large portion of it but it came out in 1989 and it still looks really good like for something that came out in the 90s I wasn't when I saw it was 89 I was like really I thought this was more 90s but yeah no the animation is clean and pretty and nice and I only wish there'd been more of it. I wish that the sequences whenever the main idol was singing and doing a concert wasn't just a still image of him holding the microphone while the song is played to kind of like assume that like he's doing a concert and you like you see him with like a leg up. So you assume he's just done a fancy kick and he's you assume he's dancing while he's performing. So apart from the fact that those scenes aren't animated, the rest of it is crisp and clear. And as I said, the anime is short and sweet and it is to the point can be watched really easily in a couple of minutes really but it basically starts the story of new teen idol Kazuya he's young he's fresh he's got lots of like female fans and he's growing in popularity and he's trying to balance his idol career with his school life he also hangs out with best mate Ahiko and Ahiko is the taller more handsome one of the pair and he's also the one that gets the yaoi stereotype of the shower scene but he's the one he's got good grades and he's like top student in school and he's top at sports and therefore obviously shower scene because he gets sweaty after playing all his sports and he is best friends with Kazuya and when Kazuya is not being an idol they hang out play video games eat together a little bit of flirting a little bit of tomfoolery Kazuya gets picked on quite a bit by Hiko, which I quite enjoy and then it's clear that Hiko kind of has a bit of a crush on his mate because he keeps like staring at him when he's doing things like in that Yari Sean and I way where it's just like oh I'm gonna stare so much staring I hadn't realized until I started reviewing anime just how much they randomly stare at each other and that's the sign it's like haha there's boys in love because he's staring at you eating noodles or in this case it's spaghetti I think but yeah so they've got a nice simple little life and it's all going nice but unfortunately there seems to be a shadowy figure that is watching Kazuya's music videos and knows all his facts about him all his like height and his weight and his schedule and and what he eats and what he does and he's like oh why am I so obsessed with you well I do like beautiful things and you're like haha this is the villain of the piece so one day after school Kazuya and Ahiko get into a bit of a fight a bit of a misunderstanding they're having a bit of fisticuffs and then all these suited men turn up get involved in the fight and the two boys get kidnapped Hence the title of B-Boy Kidnapping Idol. So they get kidnapped and uh, what we thought was the main villain, you know, the hot guy with the nice hair, the glasses and the, and the smoking, who's like, seems pretty cool, but obviously must be a bad guy. He's like, oh, yes, I kidnapped you. But really, my boss is upstairs and he wants Kazuya to go sign the contract. And he goes like, don't go with him. Don't go upstairs. And Kazuya's like, no, I know all about this. It's a famous guy who works in the music industry. And he kidnaps idols, makes them sign contracts so that they become part of his record label. It's a really shady practice, but it's done. And look, if it gets us out of this situation and it means that you're safe, then I'm going to go and sign the contract. And he goes like, no, no, I swore I'd protect you. I'll look after you. I'll get us out of here somewhere. And Kazuya's like, no, no, I can't put your life in risk. I must go and sign this contract. So he goes upstairs and we meet the true villain of the piece, who's like this pretty boy older man effeminate guy who's all like oh yes welcome I see you've come to sign my contract and you're like oh this guy doesn't seem right he's totally shady you can just tell by the character designs that he's like this is the shady dude he's not the cool handsome dude that kidnapped them in the first place he just seems a little bit a little bit more creeper, a little bit more stalker. Ahiko is downstairs, tied up, going, I must go save my friend Kazuya, I must. And then the guard that's, like, watching over him is like, well, the contract was all a bit of a ruse. Your friend's going to be in trouble upstairs. And Ahiko's like, no, I must, I must escape. And he's like, what? And the guard is like, what can you do about it? You're all tied up. Meanwhile, upstairs, Kazuya is indeed in trouble because Shady Boss Dude is just like, haha, I wasn't just after you for your talent. I actually want to make you mine. Um, you're beautiful and I want to own you. And I don't care about the contract. You just, I just must have you. So take off your clothes. And Kazuya's like, oh, gross. No, no, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, well, what do you think's going to happen to your friend downstairs if you don't comply? So poor Kazuya's like, oh, God, no. Hiko's going to get, like, stabbed and... 
I can't do anything about it. I better start stripping. So he does. So downstairs, Ahiko is having a bit of this issue with this guard. And he's like, how am I going to escape from this? He has since confessed his love to Kazia. I don't know how I totally jumped over that scene. But just before the guard came in to separate the two, Ahiko was like, I promise I'll always protect you. And then kisses him. And Kazia's like, why do you do that? Because it might be our last chance. Or very fatalistic. But Kazia doesn't seem to be too bothered by the fact that his best friend kisses him. He's like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm okay with this. Ahiko wants to escape. And guard dude throws a knife at him. And you're like, oh no, he's going to kill him. He's like, oh, you can't escape from this. Your friend's doomed. But the, the knife sits into the wall. And then he just like, oh, that's a parting gift and kind of walks out of the room, tells the other guards outside the room to keep an eye on him. Somehow just seems to like wander off for a bit. So Hiko takes a knife and escapes, beats up the guards, goes to rescue Kazia. Kazia, meanwhile, is being thoroughly molested by this pervert upstairs. Was all like, oh, look at this lovely young skin. And he's like, oh, gross, get off me. I don't like it. And he's like, Hiko, come save me. Hiko, come save me. And Hiko does. He comes to save him, you know, and they punches out the other dude and like the two of them run away and they escape the guards and they jump over the balcony and they're like ha, we're escaping woo and then randomly the guard guy handsome guy with glasses is there with a motorbike and he goes to punch him gets stopped really easily because clearly this dude is like the boss and he's like awesome and he's like i have a party gift for you this is my motorcycle and so the two boys get on the motorcycle and ride off and then the guard has a weird line about, welcome, this is how, like, Ryder shows love. And I'm like, okay, does the bike show love? Is your name Ryder? I don't know. Um, is the bike called Ryder? Uh, never mind. But thanks, dude, for randomly not letting a high school boy get molested or killing his mate and, you know, helping a pervert out. That was cool. And then he tells the other guys to stand down. So the other guys clearly listen to him. Um, meanwhile, the evil pervert upstairs is looking all flushed and happy, going, oh, Cassie is so cool. So clearly he was still turned on by the whole kidnapping and escape. And then the two boys literally ride the motorbike and start smiling as the sun rises and they ride the motorbike into the sunset. And it's all very beautiful. Whether or not they get together, who knows whether or not they become a couple? Who knows? But it's kind of implied because since they rode into the sunset and then it ends with literally like a five minute scene of still images of Kazia performing his song. He's singing and dancing apparently and then he has flashbacks to all those precious memories he has with his best friend like being teased over spaghetti and being teased in the lunch hall and then standing back to back in a fight and then riding off into the sunset and that's how b-boy kidnapping idol ends as i said it was very short very sweet i enjoyed it i really wish there'd been more to it this is one of those ones that i wanted to know more about the characters i want to know about love rider if that's his name the handsome guard that helped them out I want to know the two boys got together. It kind of left me feeling a bit like, oh, this one was nice. And I kind of would have liked more. I think I liked it because I like kidnapping. Well, I don't like kidnapping, but I like I like a little bit more of a sinister plot line. And it's you know, like it's two boys that admit that they love each other. And there's potentially a villain who wants to molest one. And there's a sexy, smart, vigilante dude. I don't know what's going on with Love Rider or Rider. Uh, but... There could have been more to the story. I just never will know. But I think this one's worth checking out. It's short. It's sweet. It's nice. Got a cute little plot. And I really enjoyed it. So for now, this is me saying bye bye.